me do this first. All right. You know, first of all, you ain't getting Ty Lue. Ty Lue ain't coming. You know, uh, Bomber ain't letting that happen. He ain't gonna yeah. let you go from the Clippers to the Lakers. He ain't, he ain't letting that happen. You can forget that. Okay? How much do you want? Yeah, yeah, that, that ain't happening. <laughs> I think that's happening so, right as you we know, speak. Yeah. yeah. How no. much do you want? Yeah. My my recommendation, uh, the next Laker coach, and out of the eight or nine names that I've heard, his, his name wasn't known there, is make LeBron the coach. Ooh. I, you know, make LeBron I, the coach. I, I have I have half kiddingly suggested let him be well, the player coach. Make, let him, him, make, let, make him the coach. Then why look, you say look, that, B? Look, listen, I got nothing but love and respect for LeBron. I love him. I think he's one of the greatest players that ever played this game. But it's, it's obvious to me, at least, that he's making a lot of decisions that's going on in this organization. No doubt. From a coaching standpoint to a player standpoint. So if you're going to allow him to make those decisions, all right, sit on the bench and make those decisions as well. Be the head coach. J.J. Reddy. You, you mean I, player I mean, coach, be right? Player, yeah. player head coach. Yeah. Well, you know, it's happened to the, before. Go back to Bill, Bill Russell, Russell days. Absolutely. Okay? Lenny Wilkins. Yeah. yeah. So some of the names that I've heard, you know, you obviously have to get somebody that LeBron is comfortable with from a head coaching standpoint. Uh, you know, the last name I heard was J.J. Reddick. Well, I started laughing. Well, now they got a podcast together, so y'all comfortable, y'all buddy-buddy, so now his name is on the list. So as far as I'm concerned, and by the all way, the names that, that on podcast there. is an X's and O's podcast. So they're talking right. real hardcore basketball. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 All right. okay. <laughs> all right. But as far as I'm concerned, the yeah. only person that he's going to really trust is is himself. And since you're making a lot of these decisions anyway, why not put him in that seat? I don't think he'd want the pressure of sitting in the co seat, the dual seat. But probably, I love you, it. You, I, you're probably you know, right. Yeah. Um, because you, you got to have somebody. Well, you don't have anybody to blame except yourself. I about, right? I was about to say, you got to have a scapegoat in that <laughs> yeah. seat. You know, as they've had the last four years. You know, you, know you, you got Frank Vogel who wins a championship with him. The next year, boom, he's gone. You know, Dalvin Ham who goes to the Western Conference Finals last year. This year, boom, he's gone. Mm. So, what are you looking for? What do you need as, for, you know, as, as a head coach to get this team to the next level? You got two of the best players in the NBA. Mm. Even at 39 years old, LeBron is still one of the best players in the NBA. Mm. Anthony Davis this year played out of his mind, in my opinion. Played more games than he's played since he he's been a Laker. Was, was as healthy as can be. Yeah. Played great against Denver, against one of the best players, if not the best player in the league, in, in the Joker. You know, held his own. So He did. At the end of the day, to me, I'm looking at it, just make LeBron the coach. All right. So I half kidded about this, but would you have any interest if they had interest in you? No. No? <laughs> no. I, I've been there, done that. You know, and, and again, it's one of those jobs right now where all the pressure and all the blame is always on the coach. You know, you, you, got, you got superstars and you got coaches, you know, coaches are getting blamed, superstars aren't. You know, you don't have these guys taking accountability for what they've done in the playoffs or what they've done over the regular season. Mm -hmm. It all goes back to the coaches. Now, maybe some of that is legit when you talk about X's and O's and things of that nature. But for the most part, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I, I think for the first time in a long time, this organization, which I love to death, you all all know I believe Purple and Gold, is in flex. They have to figure out what they're looking for and stick to it. I mean... You know, obviously in coaching anymore, you know, coaching in this league anymore, you don't have teams uh, that are showing the same type of loyalty that they used to back in the day. You know, to me, there's only really a couple of organizations that really give their coaches the chance to develop and, and grow with their players. Mm -hmm. And one of those is San Antonio with Pop, obviously, who's been there for years. And then you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, who's my favorite. No, no, you know. Mm. Oh, no, I understand. That, that's that's I my it. team. You know, yeah. the Steelers is my organization. They've had three coaches in their lifetime. So amazing. You know, so I, I look at this as partly, like you said, I'm partly joking because I don't know who that coach would be right now, who's the right fit for the Lakers. So I'm, you know, give it to LeBron. You know, I, I disagree with you, though, about not wanting a job. Who, me? Yeah, I oh. disagree with you because... How you going to disagree with me not wanting the job? <laughs> you, know, you know why? You, I don't you, want the job. You know why? <laughs> it's a job that you should take if it was in your radar. And the reason is you've had success with star players. Okay, you've had success with star players. Your personality, if you want to call it questioning the authority of LeBron James, you ain't got a problem doing that. No. no. And, and it feels like to me where he's had the success at, so to speak, 
was when they questioned his authority. When you go look at Miami and, mm. you know, Spoles wasn't, you know, better yet, Pat Riley wasn't having it. He wasn't, he wasn't doing the Shaq coming down to the floor and coaching. Right. So he said, no, 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 you play basketball. And, 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 and Eric, too. And, and I was going to say, too. And now, Eric did the same thing. He's like, yeah. no, nah, man, you play basketball. Right. So he has success doing that. Then he goes to Cleveland, and he respects Ty Lu to the degree that Ty Lu, who's not available, mm -hmm. ex-player, mm -hmm. won championship, knows how, knows X's and O's, knows how to do things, but he didn't mind challenging LeBron at the same time. That's why LeBron likes him. It ain't just because he won a championship right. with him. Right. He likes him because he respects him, because he... Not afraid of him. He challenged him. He made sure. Then LeBron leaves, and then obviously Ty Lue is fired. The Frank Vogel situation, I'll never... Maybe they didn't value the bubble as much as we did mm -hmm. to get another uh, uh, banner, up, banner there. up there. Maybe the, the organization really didn't value that, so they moved on from Frank Vogel. They did. Darwin Ham was in a, in, in a lose-lose situation. It just was. So it just... It wasn't somebody that they wanted to begin with, and he kind of just fell in their lap. They signed off on it. LeBron agreed to it to some degree. He takes them to the Western Conference Final. And as I said, if they was, as I told everybody, I said, if they lose in round one, he's going to go bye-bye, no matter how they lose. It could have been game seven. If they lost, bye-bye. Now, when you talk about head coaches that they should go after, I think guys like Fizdale, okay, who, res who LeBron respects and likes. And, and has had teams that had bad rosters in New York, but had a decent roster in his first year in Memphis, and they wind up winning 40-some-odd games. Then him and Casal, that thing fell apart, and he wind up moving on. Or I look at a guy, which they probably never, ever do, is like a Brian Shaw, who's been an assistant coach under Ty Lue and other coaches, yep. And he had a shot in Denver. Did you see his roster in Denver? When he was... <laughs> think about you it. You mean that crap he had in Denver? Mm -hmm. You can't win like, like that. that crap he had in Denver. You can't yeah. win like that. And LeBron respects <sighs> B. Shaw, but it would be up to LeBron to go to them and say, I want this type of coach. I want this. Now, as far as J.J. Reddick goes, can, can he be successful under LeBron? Maybe. What's his assistant coaches look like? Do, could they be there teaching him along the way? You point to Steve Kerr, and you say, Steve Kerr never did it. Look at him. Well, look at his team, number one. On top right, of that, right. Lord on have top right. of that... Right. Mark Jackson had already done what right. to teach right. that. Exactly. He already got him to that And level. on top of that, though, Skip, Steve Kerr was in the organization he of the was. Phoenix Suns. He wasn't yeah. coaching, no, he was, but he was a general manager, right, which right. essentially right. is coaching, right. because he's picking players, he's uh, strategizing with the coach on what things to do. So he didn't start off like J.J. Reddick could potentially start off. Mm -hmm. Then there's the name Mark Jackson. I don't know all the details about what went on in Golden State, but you can't tell me this dude can't coach you. You can't tell me he, can he doesn't deserve another yeah. opportunity with a franchise to coach. He is just coach. his own man. Yeah. And he does things his own way. And, and that's okay and you if you win. You have to live with that. He's yeah. been black, just, just put it out there. He's been blackballed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Let's, let's right. just put it out there. Which Mark Jackson no has sense. been blackballed to be a head coach again in the NBA for a number of years, and you're right. It doesn't make sense, but it's the, it's the truth. It doesn't make sense, but it's the truth. He's been blackballed. Okay, because they, of his... Because of Mark Jackson being Mark Jackson. Okay, and religious affiliation and all those well, things. Yeah, that, I think yeah. It's, it's, it's all that that yeah, is that in package that package of, yeah. Yeah, I understand. of being yeah. Mark Jackson. I understand. And, and you're right, he can flat out coach. Yeah, if you look at him win a championship, you got to... Some, some things in life you got to put behind you. If you're looking to win a championship, yeah. some things you just got to ignore if you're the Lakers and Jeannie busting them. But then I also think from an organizational standpoint, people that may want the job are afraid to even deal with it because the way it's set up. Mm. When you got to deal with so many different layers of people. Now, I ain't in an organization. I just know based on outside, when you're dealing with the Linda Rambuses and the Kurt Rambuses, and now all of a sudden you're dealing with Rob Polinka, who's really in charge? Is it really Gina? Is she deferring to them still? All of those sort of things, coaches may not even want to deal with that. Yeah. The ones that you can actually get. All right. But this man would be a great fit for this team at this moment because I he knows so. how to navigate the, the building. Me. He can navigate this building, okay? I appreciate you. All right. But it's true. But I would not wish this franchise <laughs> upon you at this moment like I because said, I appreciate that is but correct. I'm, I'm good. Because I'm I would good. not wish LeBron on you at this point because he's <laughs> too far along. Would would he respect you because you got three 
you could put your three rings on the table and say, I got three of these. And I, I won them at the highest level, the highest ways. And Darvin didn't have any rings that he could put on the table. He was a decent NBA player, but he wasn't this man. So I think there would be a meeting of the minds, but you would not back down from LeBron and you would help him. You would save him from himself minutes wise, the way Darvin tried and failed to do. Because LeBron's just going to do what he well, wants. Well, he's going to respect yeah. him. That's what I said. He's going to respect him coming through the door. Just through the door. Yeah, because he, he, are, yeah. Look, he already knows that guys like this, they're not, they just not going to have it. Mm -mm. You know, even though he may be right at times. Yeah. But they're going to have a conversation about it. Okay. He ain't going to do what he did to Darwin Ham. That, that is uh, correct. To, to Byron Scott. If Byron game, Scott was, no, he wouldn't do that. Game four, <laughs> LeBron threw a fit no, on the No, he just floor. wouldn't do it. it, it close to a tantrum the on the floor. The respect level is right? too great. Yeah. And it was yeah. so embarrassing for poor Darwin just had to sit there and take it. And then it screwed up his mind because in the next game, Austin Reeves wants to, you know, let's do Let's challenge. And he's like, okay, let's challenge. And he got completely out of whack, right? And then yeah. AD wants to challenge. Okay, I'll, I'll, I give in. I'll challenge, right? No, you got to be in charge. You got to be in command. And the, LeBron would not have shown you up like that. So that would be the start. But again, I wouldn't wish any of this on you because somebody's going to have to pay in the end. As I always say, true. the quote unquote goat needs a scapegoat in the end if it doesn't work out. And that's the head coach. Yep. And not me. I'm yep. good. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> I'm trying to think. But I'm still trying to think who who who, who is the who is the fit for the Lakers from a All head right, coaching look, standpoint. Look, who the, who the, do you guys the most really think? decorated coach out there is Budenholzer because he did win a championship and he was Pop's right hand for many many years. True. He did very well in Atlanta. Okay, he's got some credentials. Would LeBron respect? I I don't know. Probably not. Would he be able to communicate and deal with LeBron? Probably not. Four, That's just me. Four coaches in seven seasons mm -hmm. with the Lakers. Luke Walton. And then after Luke, it was uh, Frank Vogel, Darwin Hammond, mm -hmm. and whoever they get now. Mm -hmm. I don't see That's any of them. The three of those four, that, I don't see any of them twos where LeBron yeah. really it's was not respected them like that. It's not exactly the Steelers, right? No, it is not. No. Well, okay. <laughs> hey. Love you, appreciate you, and Skip, always a thank pleasure, you for my coming friend. in, and uh, enjoy your golf game today. Thank you. All right. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.